there in France. Yeah. And uh, the uh, the purpose of the visit, he was quite forthright about it, was that the way that the feud was going between his friend yeah. and the other fellow, as uh, it was going to do a great deal of damage to everybody concerned. It was going to damage the two participants. It was going to damage the party. It was going to damage the country. It was going to damage a number of other people that it would reach out and touch. And it seemed uh, to be tragic for it to go on this way. And before it went any further and these parties were hurt more and other people were hurt, it would be better if in some way it could be stopped. Uh, and then we discussed that at some length. I might say I had no suggestions, no observations of any kind. Of, all I did was sit and listen and occasionally ask a question. So the discussion then went along the line. Well, what, what, what is this? What is this damage that's likely to be done? I wasn't quite sure on just what he was driving. Well, um, this whole affair has been very widespread. They can debate till kingdom come who had the right to do it, or who knew it, who didn't know it, one thing and another. And yet, the farther it went, or the more people would be dragged in, and the more embarrassing it might become insofar as the friendly uh, people outside the country are concerned, other outfits. And if, uh, if it weren't stopped, why, uh, then... Uh, this uh, other fellow who I lunched with, his client would uh, have to take uh, steps to protect himself even further than he had up until now. So I said, well, what, what is the danger that lies ahead? Well, the fellow said, in two areas. First, um, his client's opponent uh, keeps uh, putting this stuff out. had three of them that he drops in piecemeal, keeps the running feud going. They understand he's getting ready to drop a fourth one. That keeps it uh, exacerbated. And that he ought to stop that. Because that just upsets everybody and it's not going to end up doing anybody any good. Second, that uh, this inquiry that uh, is planned by Ed Long. Um, been announced that uh, that would be public inquiry, and if that were to take place, then he is sure that a great many people would get dragged into it. If he got dragged into it, he's going to see to it that all the other AGs of the past 20 years have got to be called to see what their situation was. Um, people that uh, may be displaced inhabit now ought to be called and see what kind of instructions they gave and what kind of information they received and one thing or another like that. And uh, he thinks that uh, that would be a mistake to go into that whole situation that way, uh, uh, particularly at a public hearing. So uh, I raised the question, well, you're not suggesting that, that uh, my, uh, my client, see I had a client my client, that would be you, and you're not suggesting that my client can step in the way of that. No, he said, I don't think he can. Uh, well, and I said, that would go on. No, he said, I don't think it has to go on that way. One thing is, they might have executive sessions, which would help some, but uh, you never know how long to stay executive, but he said attention might be given to that. That in that regard, if uh, the man down here, his client's opponent, continues to drop this poison and leak this stuff, maybe pull confidential stuff out of the file and make public that should not be made public, then he said his client might uh, have to go to the head of that committee and, and uh, ask for a hearing so that uh, he could say, uh, justify his own position. I might say there's quite an inconsistency there, but I just point out. So I said, well, if you know, then nobody can interfere with such a hearing if they decide to start it. You can't get 
Patrick. I had point that I understand. He said the real solution to this matter is that this fellow, the one who's making all the trouble down here for his client, that he be called off. I said, well, do you think there's anybody who can do that? He said, yes, I do. Well, I said, I can go back over five or six AD. None of them seem to be able to keep him under control. Well, he said, I don't know. And I said, you know. Just go back over it. Nobody was able to. Your client obviously wasn't able to anyway. And I said, I don't quite get the point. Do you think anybody can do it? Well, he said, I, I think that if, uh, if uh, my client were to understand that the whole affair uh, could be very damaging to the party and to the individuals involved and to the country and this was made clear to uh, the other party to the dispute here in town that he might be persuaded to not to go on and carry on the dispute anymore and the matter could just be permitted to subside and fade away and if there was no sharp contest between them then uh, perhaps there wouldn't be very much interest in having a hearing and if both the parties uh, to the dispute felt that there was no need to have a hearing, why well, the matter might then be shut off in some manner. So this was the general substance of his remarks all the way through. I had no reaction to whether or not it was feasible or unfeasible other than to say that I didn't know anybody who'd ever had any real measure of control, and I didn't see why suddenly he thought that somebody could. Well, he said, that's what he seems to us ought to be done. He said, I'm going back and report to my fellow. He said, we appreciate the time that you've given us. We've had a chance now to put our case to, so that you might consider. I said, well, I assume that you must have done something else about it because this has been going on for some time. Yes, he said, a staff member of my client at one time had talked to Califano and Moyers. In either instance, that they, they think that anything could be done at all. It just wasn't given any attention and nothing came of it. So uh, his client suggested that he might come down and have this talk to me in the hope that uh, we all might see it as a, as a threat to the country, the party, and the individuals to see if something could be done about it. End of report. That's good. I think you ought to know this, and you're at liberty, to, I think, to uh, uh, say you've explored it to any way you want to. I have had no communication uh, at my initiation with his enemy uh, since uh, uh, he left the Attorney General's office. I communicated with uh, uh, through the Attorney General to him. Uh, I have never felt that uh, if I tried to influence him one way or the other or make a suggestion to him that it would bear any fruit. On the other hand, I think it would be probably wind up with being interpreted as an attempt to fix him. And I've been very, very careful never to do that. Uh, I've been told by uh, this fellow's client, uh, two or three times when he was there, that uh, uh, he wouldn't pay any attention to uh, any uh, attorney general and that he thought he was courting me, but I never have seen any evidence of it, and I think that he got in his own mind an illusion that just didn't exist, so, so much for that. Um, he has not consulted me. The last conversation I had with him that I remember, the only one I had in connection with any of these developments, was he and the AG came to my request the first week after I got in office, as my memory. I got complaints from the Nevada senators that they were doing this bugging. And I asked the then AG, and I understood from him that that was not happening. And uh, so I uh, asked if they get in touch with the senators.
explain it, and they sent somebody up there to tell them it wasn't happening. I believe it was the assistant attorney general or something. There's a memo in the files now that reveals they went up, and what they did, they, they twisted, they had one of their smart journalistic friends to say that they never put a tap or a bug on anybody except in the most highly important national security and national affairs matters. Oh and national affairs matters means uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy or anybody, Bobby Baker, or anybody that opposes you. It's just pretty wide-ranging. Or maybe anybody having an affair. Yeah, maybe anybody having an affair. That's where the goddamn thing really gets dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, I went on to sleep with other things in 64. <laughs> As you remember, I had uh, Governor King started running him for vice president, and the fellow out in Wisconsin started running him. And then he planned to take over the convention. And then I got through with him, I got a hold of Gold, uh, uh, Goldwater. And in 65, I got to get complaints again. I never heard of the Bobby Baker thing. But Bobby Baker did stay the day that uh, uh, he lost his job, that his phone was bugged. And I knew it was. And the reason I knew it was was because I said something to him that I never said to my wife or any other human being. And I saw a senator get up on the floor and denounce him for an act of mine. Precisely it was this. Yarborough was trying to force himself on appropriations committee. And he called me and said, if you make me, I'll change it. I said, I'd like to see him give him consideration. He wasn't very friendly, but I want to get him off my neck. And he said, well, I put him on the committee list for another committee. And the leadership usually takes my recommendations. And unless you make me, I'm not going to change it. And I said, well, I don't want to make you do anything, although it would be rather helpful and so on and so forth if he were changed, but I don't want to interrupt what you're doing, and I didn't really care much, but I want to, at least if it's possible and feasible, easy, I didn't want him to think I was trying to dictate Mansfield's job. Well, he went in and submitted the list, and he was, uh, his, his list prevailed, they just followed what he said. And about two days later, Yarber didn't get the job, and he got up in the Senate floor and said, I know the conniving going on here. I know the conversations take place. And when some little old clerk comes in here and sets himself up and starts doing these things, it's high time we did something about it. The next week or so, they started raising questions about uh, uh, some employee of his as a page, Bobby's, Bobby Baker. And the next week or so, President Kennedy called me in and said, I'm very distressed that Bobby Baker had been having conversations with some bad people out at Las Vegas and some bad people over to the Dominican Embassy, some bad people down at, uh, at uh, Miami, and I think you ought to get him to resign. And I said, oh, uh, Mr. President, I don't have any... I couldn't go tell him resign. I'm not, I didn't hire him. He's employed by the, all the Senate. Right. He got his job. He was there before I came. He's there now. But I am uh, his friend, and if there's something that he could do, tell me what it is. Has he done something wrong? And he said, well, these are the things that happened. And he went ahead and related about what these taps show. And he said, I asked uh, Mike Mansfield and Dirksen come down and I talked to them about it. Or I, I asked Hoover to go out and report to him. I've forgotten which. And he said Hoover is going to meet him out at Mike's house. Well, Hoover went out there and told them all these taps. I don't think he told them they were the result of taps. But he told them uh, uh, that he had heard Bobby talking and there's not really anything uh, 
uh, really vicious. It's a lot of women and a lot of talking and a lot of bragging and a lot of gossip. But it's not anything that's uh, you know, that's uh, bad for the nation. Might have been some petty thievery that I don't know anything about, but generally it was it was just a lot of big talk and. Uh, uh, but they got his job at Mansfield's house by sending Hoover out there. Then the president called me in the next night after this and said that he wished that I'd get Bobby to resign. I said, well, I'd be glad to tell him you think he ought to resign. He said, well, if he doesn't, he's really going to get in trouble. I said, well, is there any indication if he does resign, he won't get in trouble? Does he serve any purpose for that? I just don't know enough about it. No, he said, I just don't know. Uh, I think that we ought to resign. And, of course, he never, Bobby never did deliver the votes. Bobby was a Kerr man and was a Johnson man. And